Lumps in the neck are areas that you can feel and they can arise from the skin, the tissues underneath the skin. They can occur from your salivary glands, uh, from lymph nodes within the neck, uh, as well as endocrine uh, glands such as the thyroid. It's really important to, to get these checked out if they're persistent. Swellings from, particularly from lymph glands can occur in response to infection uh, and they usually settle after a few days. But those lumps that are persistent uh, or are causing concern need to be examined by a clinician and quite often that doctor can reassure you at the first visit that um, uh, of the underlying cause for this. They'll take account of where the lump is, how it feels, uh, how it's behaving, uh, as well as uh, other clinical factors. Lumps in the neck can come from a, a wide variety of sources. You can get them arising in the skin itself. The area, the tissue just underneath the skin can also uh, generate lumps. Uh, we've got salivary glands just under the jaw and in front of the ear and those can get swollen so that you can feel them. Your thyroid gland which is lower down in your neck can get swollen. And we have a, a large number of lymph nodes on both sides of the neck. Those lymph nodes can swell in response to infection, inflammation and very rarely due to cancer. So lumps in the neck can occur for a a wide variety of, uh, of reasons. Um, infection, both locally or, or more generally, can cause lymph glands to swell. Uh, your salivary glands can get blocked and can swell. Your thyroid gland can, get, uh, can enlarge. And there are a few uh, situations in which you're born with the ability to form lumps, even in later life. There's something called a thyroglossal cyst, which can occur in the front of the neck and cystic swellings in the side of the neck can also occur. On occasions, particularly in adults, there is a risk that a lump in the neck can represent a cancer, which is one reason why it's important. If the lump is persistent and you're worried about it, that it's important to get that checked out by a doctor. As an adult with a swelling in the neck, if it comes and goes over a couple of days, um, in many cases, it doesn't need any investigation. Uh, if it disappears of its own accord, then usually it's nothing to worry about. In situations where the swelling persists or it's causing local irritation or problems, uh, then it certainly does need to be checked out. And indeed, a painless lump in the neck also needs to be examined by a doctor, particularly if it's there for longer than a couple of weeks, uh, then it does need to be examined and investigated. When you see your doctor with a lump in the neck, the first thing they'll do is they'll take a history, focusing really on how long that lump's been there for, whether it comes up and goes down, uh, what are the symptoms it's causing you. They may ask you if, it, if there's any uh, changes over the skin, how you're feeling in general, whether you've lost any weight, are you feeling unwell, have you had a history of any infections such as tonsillitis. Uh, they'll want to know if you've had a history of lumps in the neck before, have you, ha, has anything in your past medical history uh, uh, caused for these lumps? They'll also want to know what medication you're on. On occasions, medication itself can cause lumps in the neck. They'll want to know about some factors uh, associated with your lifestyle. That may involve, uh, they may want to know about whether you've smoked before, if you've drunk alcohol and how much. After that, uh, there's, there's some specific questions that they may ask. Have you been abroad? Have you come into any contact with anybody with infections? Uh, have you lost, have you had any sweats at night? Uh, are you able to swallow? Has your voice changed? So the doctor will use the information that you, that you give them to hone in their questions. After that, they'll want to examine you. They'll want to examine your neck. Usually the doctor will stand behind you to examine the lump, uh, looking at where it is, does it move, how it feels, the consistency of it and trying to define exactly where it's arisen from. Other things that they may want to do include looking in your mouth. Uh, most ENT surgeons will uh, need to perform a nasendoscopy. This is a small painless camera that's, post, that's passed through your nose to look at the back of your nose, your tongue, your voice box and the areas of your uh, pharynx, the area that we can't see through the mouth. 
It's really important that that's done as on occasions lumps can be associated with problems inside. Certainly infections can be seen and on occasions cancers can also be detected. When the doctor has finished examining you, uh, they'll look to see whether you need any investigations after that. On occasions, blood tests can be very useful. Uh, other tests that you may need are a scan. There are different sorts of scans. An ultrasound scan uh, is a painless uh, scan which involves a probe just on a bit of jelly on the skin, and that can provide a huge amount of information about the underlying cause for the lump. While you're having this, it may be possible to pop a needle into the lump itself to take some cells off. Other scans that we commonly use are a CT scan and an MRI scan. A CT scan uses a series of x-rays to create a three-dimensional uh, picture of, of the underlying tissues. It's particularly good where uh, stones or bone problems maybe uh, need to be detected. The MRI scan is a complex series of magnets that produce a, a very detailed picture, particularly of soft tissues under the skin. Again, this can be incredibly uh, useful at defining where the lump is arising from and giving a lot of detail about where it's coming from. Ultimately, if your doctor is concerned about the lump, they'll need to try to understand uh, what that lump is. The needle test I've, I've mentioned already can provide a huge amount of detail. On occasions, other tests such as a slightly bigger needle or even removing the lump itself may be needed. However, the tests that you've had already may give a, a huge amount of information about leading the doctor to understand what's going on. Once we know what the cause of the lump is, then treatment can be directed. If this lump has arisen as a, as a result of infection, then treatment such as antibiotics may be useful. Um, if there's another cause for it, then your treatment can be directed accordingly. This is why it's important to have an appropriate set of investigations uh, done early in the process so that we can understand what the cause of the lump is. Treating a neck lump really depends on understanding what has caused that swelling. In many cases, you can be reassured that no active treatment is needed uh, and that requires no additional treatment. If the cause of the swelling is an infection, treating that infection may be appropriate. For more specific areas, uh, thyroid problems require investigation and could require uh, surgery to remove part of the thyroid. Salivary gland swellings may not need any treatment at all, but removing the salivary gland or removing stones or blockages within the gland can be appropriate. Lymph nodes that have become enlarged uh, depends on the cause for that enlargement. There are a variety of treatments for an enlarged lymph node depending on the underlying cause. Skin problems need assessment by a dermatologist uh, and again often reassurance is all that's required but surgery and on occasions radiotherapy for a swelling in the neck can be used to treat it. Mm -hmm.